Hello, I'm Andrea Gigline, and welcome to this segment of Serving Your Own Success. I promise if you spend some time with us today, you will have the opportunity to serve your success in life one way or the other. I have with me today a guest that had been with me on in another episode, Dr. Courtney Warren, and the response from the audience has been so beautiful that I asked her to come back. I had kind of fed into it because I knew her work so well and asked her to come back. And it's, doc so let me give the, your full name for those please, who didn't listen to please. that segment, Dr. Courtney Warren, who is a clinical psychologist. Her base work had been in eating disorders, but if you listen to the other episode, she has evolved her work into the concept of self-awareness and why we and how we lie to ourselves. Yes. And also with me today is my co-host, Sharon Adeshek, who was a producer for America's Most Wanted and an entrepreneur in our community, and most of all, why she joins me in this fun little uh, episodes on Mondays is because she has an incredibly curious mind. So, Courtney, when yes. I left off on that last segment, what I wanted to talk about was you had mentioned that you have a blog in Psychology Today. Yes. And I remembered at one time, one of the blogs that you had done was about the concept of luck. It was. And it sparked me because I had one set of feelings about luck, you had another set of feelings about luck. So I want to lead in today and just say, when someone says to you, I got where I was because of luck, mm -hmm. what happens in you? <laughs> I have a strong reaction sometimes to the ways that we use the word luck. Okay. And the reason for that is, as someone who studies self-deception or the ways that we lie to ourselves, mm -hmm. I am often struck that people will use the word luck to de defer responsibility for their choices. Okay. And that is really tricky. So for example, Andrea and I met at the gym, mm -hmm. and one of my trigger pet peeves that people will say to me, especially after having two young children is, oh, Courtney, you're so lucky that you get to go to the gym. You're in such good shape. You're so lucky that you're in such good shape. And I want to put up a big red flag and say, listen, I got to tell mm -hmm. you, there is some luck involved. I have genetically a mm -hmm. very lean figure. I'm mm -hmm. tall. That's luck. But, I have nothing and, and to, to do with it. And to prove it, it, we go to the same gym, but our bodies don't look the same. <laughs> <laughs> so there is luck, but it is not luck that I get to the gym. Right. It has nothing to do with luck. In fact, it is painful and miserable, and there are days where I don't want to go, and especially if I've been sleeping two hours at a chunk with my newborn, do you think I'm lucky that I want get to go to the gym? Hmm. I got to tell you, it's not luck. It's choice. Yes. And so I'm very conscientious about the ways that we defer responsibility for our choices because I think it feeds very much into our self-deceptive tendencies. And when people use the word luck, I really want it to be that it was luck, meaning you had no control over it. You were powerless over it. You did nothing to deserve or not deserve it, mm -hmm. right? There are really good luck yes. that happens in our life and really yes. bad luck, and it was no fault of your own, right? Correct. Or no doing of your own. Mm -hmm. But there are so many times where people will say, well, I just got unlucky, or I was, I, I, it was just good luck for you and bad luck for me, where I want to say, mm, mm, <laughs> ah. That's really not true. Embrace the truth of how you are feeding into your current life situation. If it's really luck, I'm really okay with it. But if it's not, right. own it. Right. Right. <laughs> and Sharon, I, since you were at that same gym, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this uh, gym grew a lot wow, of, yeah, a lot a lot of curious of minds. You know, uh, there is one aspect of that, that when I first read uh, the original blog that you did on this mm -hmm. topic, because I have actually, my love of the concept of synchronicity, then there was like, I knew y you could have two people equally prepared for something and, and, and be driving towards a particular goal, yet one would have something happen, and sometimes you could call it synchronistic, mm -hmm. other times it was just like, it really did feel lucky that that person got something to happen, and, mm -hmm. and I first started thinking about this when I first was living in California, and I was around a lot of parents who 
had the aspiration that their children should go to Stanford. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these children were all, you know, they were all the GPA four point plus, you know, took every AP class. They did every community service. They mm -hmm. did everything. You know, they, there is this look to these young people on paper. And some of the parents were distressed beyond belief that their child had not got it into Stanford. And I was trying to tell them the subjectivity mm -hmm. of the reviewer of the application. Mm -hmm. And I used the term luck. I said, you'll mm -hmm. never know if the day your child wrote an essay about how they gave up three summers and went to Africa to build wells hits a, a reviewer as that was the thing they had wanted. We don't know mm -hmm. this, but that was the thing they had wanted to do. But, you know, for a host of their life reasons, that opportunity did not step in. And it was who you get as a reviewer is the luck of the draw on that given day. That, that what they are bringing to the party subjectively is really just luck on your part, whether you have the one that resonates with the story or whether or not I don't think it's that no okay, no so when, so when you're when your application is being reviewed by college uh, committees you're given a point value yes so you're giving as a captain you get if you're the captain of the team you get a certain point if you right. get this you get that you know I don't think it's as much luck as it is uh, what you bring to the table. No, I think the person like, the luck of the a luck the of the person who's reading your essay. Yes. Uh, I don't I don't I think that level of subjectivity. So please, you're the you're yes. the expert. Tell us what tell Help us. us. I think that's probably a very complicated example. Okay. It's possible that there's some luck involved in who's going to review the application and whether they're drawn to your personal statement because personal statements yes. will draw, some mm -hmm. of us will resonate, right. and some of us won't, and we're not as objective as we'd like to be. Correct. Right. Um, but I think really the message here is that when something doesn't go the way you wanted it to, right. it's not a good idea to blame something else. Okay, so And so that's I would never level. encourage them to say, well, this is about, like I would say, an, for whatever reason, it looks like your kid made a lot of efforts to get into this school and did a lot of wonderful things. It sounds like from your description. Right. And it didn't happen. Okay, well, I'll, I'll use a business example of when I've used luck. And I truly believe it could have been very different and that luck was the thing that made it different. So I and my husband owned a hotel. And in 08, we came into that year, we were in good financial shape, we had built the occupancy, we were winning awards, everything was just looking beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then September and October came along. And that was not, it wasn't personal, that dilemma mm -hmm. that hit businesses in general was not personal. Okay. It was, but yet it, if it had been a different time, I would have said, you know, the economy was strong. We got lucky. We had a good product and we're winning all these awards and a good service. So I would use the term luck in that regard. Like, it's unlucky when the economy turns and we weren't unaware the economy was turning. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you own real estate, you own real estate. You don't get mm -hmm. to say, oh, I don't own real estate because the economy is now turning five months ago. So I would use it that way. Is that, am I denying something? Am I? I think in general, if you if you're attributing luck or, or unluckiness to really truly an outside force that you have no control over, that's true. Okay. So it's quite possible that all of us, any of us who lived here in the world in the U.S. Yes. in 2007, 2008, who felt the economy drop, right. we can say that was unlucky for all of us who had money Correct. in the markets or who owned yeah. homes or for whatever reason, and that's probably true. There are people, however, for whom that is not a true statement okay. because they had a hand in the fact that the markets crashed. Correct. And Correct. for them to say, well, it was just unlucky for you is actually false. Right. Correct, because so there was a manipulation. This is where the concept of luck and choice is very complicated because okay. it does depend on whose perspective you're looking at. And even in the situation with the economy, right. there are lots of comments that people will often make that they will then use to justify behaviors that were not about luck. Right, they right, were right. about choice. Right. I'm not a big lucky person. Or You're not, not a big lucky person? person. No, oh. I don't believe in really luck or no luck. I think it's lucky if I buy a raffle ticket and my name gets drawn. 
Lucky. Right. That's okay. You had nothing to do with it except you no. bought the ticket, which was a choice. Right, which was a choice that added now, to it. And, but and so really nuance this for me. It, within positive psychology, um, one of the guidelines is that you work at elevating your positivity through consciously doing things, different exercises, savoring your day, writing in journals, writing letters of gratitude to elevate your personal positive moods and that by doing that when you then enter a space with other human beings they will there's a, a tendency that positive people will relate to that and your more opportunities will come your way or your we they definitely the research shows that you'll be healthier all of those kind of things now it's not luck that you do those things but no, it, it is, is not luck no, it is. It, I think it goes back to your discipline, but whether or not you have a chance to be exposed to something, I think is. Like I would always say of my parents that one of the main differences on how I view the world and how my parents may handle the world was exposure. And the different way my life changed that I got greater exposure was just something that didn't happen in their life. So that would be, you know, like I was more fortunate in that regard. But everybody also made choices to stay where they were. Okay. Your parents still live in the same neighborhood. Oh, in the same house. What do you mean? So, it, and, and you didn't. So I did they, not. If no, they no, had no. wanted more exposure, not that it, no. the culture would be the same, but if they right. had wanted more exposure, that would have yeah. been a choice. It isn't Correct. luck or unluck. Right. Simplified, my daughter and I went to this event where we volunteered, and I knew she really wanted to be deal with the animals at the petting zoo. Okay. So we went early, and someone had told me, say something to the, to the head coordinator. And so we said something, we got there early, and then everyone's like, lucky, and you got to do that. And I was like, there's nothing lucky about that. Correct. We chose to come early, we chose Correct. to speak to the volunteer coordinator, yeah. and we were the only two chosen out of probably 120 yeah. people. Yeah, you know, out of the self-help community, one of the, <laughs> one of the adages I love the most is that you do not G-E-T if you do not A-S-K. Right. Okay? So, you know, and I, and I do take, I, I do really appreciate that aspect of what you have said, Courtney, about it is with a sense of determination, you are, there is a sense of preparedness. You're, you're really working towards something and it is in that working towards that things can open up. Mm -hmm. If you, you know, you can't find an opportunity on your sofa type of thing, or maybe on the internet mm -hmm. you could, but you mm -hmm. know, you, it, you need to be exposed. You need to be trained. You need mm -hmm. to have that. Yes, but, and it's not to diminish, because I also specialize in cultural competency as a psychologist. Okay. It isn't to diminish cultural realities that you have no control over. For example, okay. if you're born in a low-income, impoverished neighborhood, it is true that you're going to have less access. Yeah. And that is luck. Yes. I don't think you had any control over that. That's the point. I don't think right. there was anything you did or didn't do. But once in that environment... You now get to make choices as you age about what kind of life you want and who you want to be. And that is not about luck. Okay. That is about ownership of who okay. you are and how you're going to live your life. Yeah. I, and the concept of making your own luck. Yeah. Like really diligently. Creating yourself. Yes. Creating choices. your life. Yes. Okay. I, I, that, that makes me feel a lot more comfortable because I know that the concept of luck... Uh, is sometimes it actually feels good to think that you were Absolutely. lucky about something. Oh, we want to feel special. It's I this know, lovely existential I like reality. Oh, I'm oh, so oh, 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 aren't I lucky? <laughs> yes, it's not true, by the way. It's oh, no, but we do want to yeah, feel that. Right. We do. Yeah. We want to feel special. Yes. yes. Oh my gosh. I want to feel special. I'm that one of a million. That's me. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh no. So, <laughs> what things have you conscientiously, or if you could? Um, speak to the person who's right now in between jobs mm -hmm. and they're talking about their friends who are lucky enough to be employed and they're just not that lucky mm -hmm. or someone who wants to have a child mm -hmm. um, and isn't having it like what what types of things would you suggest they look at for themselves to become more aware the first thing I would have them do is become as self-aware as possible about where they are placing responsibility. Oh, okay. So if it's luck 
they don't have responsibility for it. And if it's choice, they do. Okay. Look at the parts of your life that you have control over and make okay. choices with them. So for example, if you are out of work, let's say you were unlucky, let's say your company went bankrupt right. and, and it wasn't something that you had any control over. Or the CEO absconded with all the money or had false right. books. Something. I mean, we've had a lot yeah, of really interesting, interesting things happen this last right. year. Yes. Nothing, nothing yeah, yeah, to no do with your over. performance. Any of those things Ask happen and you lost employees. your job. Yep. You can absolutely say that was really unlucky. That right. thing happened, okay. it was really unlucky, I lost my job. Now, that's the only thing you get to blame luck on. Okay. Now you get to say, okay, that happened, it was really unlucky. What choices am I going to make to get me where I'd like to go now? Okay. And when you see your friends who are employed and you have that twinge of jealousy and twinge of insecurity, and I know you're going to want to tell me you don't have it, but I probably yeah, 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 yeah. do. Because all of us do, do. And all of us have, t when you Comparison notice those twinges, kills, kills. any of that little emotional reactivity, pause. Yes. Pause, pause, pause. Stop. And before you say anything negative or positive about that other person, look at yourself. Right. What does this say about me? What is it bringing up in me? Right. Where am I insecure? What do I need to learn about? And how can I get stronger in that area? Perfect. Perfect. Period. I love that. Okay. okay, I do too. So I want. I really want to end with that because okay. I just had invited you back for this short conversation because I wanted to. You know, there's a lot going on in the world that we wish we could feel a whole lot luckier about at any given moment, and the ability to look in the mirror and really use the terminology. I have a choice, even about how outcomes that don't go our way turn. Like that is not. The other person was lucky and you were not, but how, what choice am I going to make today regardless of this outcome? Yeah. I wanna to end today by connecting the two that we actually had together and how it all kind of ties with the work in positive psychology because I had to laugh to myself. You know, positive psychology is based on these 24 values in action that came out of a study that said when a society is healthy, the human beings within the society have a, a mixture of these 24 characteristics. And on that list, there is not lying. That, you, you know, it just miraculously, <laughs> lying and luck are not, are not any of those, which mm -hmm. speaks directly to it is always a choice and we always have that choice. Always. Yes. If you'd like to reach us, just look at the bottom and you will see that you can reach me at Dr. Success, D R S U C C E S S, at servingsuccess.com. And I will have Dr. Courtney Warren's information at the episode listing. And you'll be able to get everything from her TEDx talk to her book on Amazon and, of course, her website, Choose Honesty. Sharon, thank Choose you. Honesty. Courtney, thank you, thank you thank for coming you. back again. Pleasure. I really appreciate thank it. You. Thank you for coming. Thank you.